Welcome to Education Live. This is one of our brand new webinar offerings. So I'm really excited you could make it, really excited you're here. And yes, I am here live. So uh, I will be speaking through our great presentation today, but then I'll be here to answer any questions. So um, who am I? Hello, my name is Jamie. I have been on the education team at Active Campaign for approaching five years now. So I'm very excited. Hello, Richard. Thank you for coming. Um, I love teaching Active Campaign, and lead scoring is really one of those things that I, I get hyped about, so I'm excited about today. Um, feel free to ask any questions that you would like in the chat. If I don't have a chance to get to them right away, one of my teammates will answer, or I will come to it at the end. So who's ready to buy? We're gonna talk about how to use lead scoring. That's what we're here for today, all about lead scoring. So first up, the what. What is lead scoring? So a lead score is a numerical value that you assign to your contacts. And the single score can be comprised of one or more rules that both adds and subtracts points from any contact that meets your conditions. Um, so say, for example, uh, you want to give someone 10 points if they're in your city and you want to give them another 10 points if they looked at your pricing page. If someone did both of those things, then they would have 20 points. So you decide those kinds of uh, choices. So scores are actually all going to be created on a managed scoring page. And just so you know, I'm going to go through the, the how, the what, the where, the why before I jump into the platform, because uh, I think it's easier to learn about what we're doing first before we actually jump in and look at what the platform does itself. Um, so, but scores are managed on the managed scoring page and you create these rules in the segment builder, which I will also show a little bit later on. You can also set scores to expire after a period of time. And that's another great thing to do as well. Um, this is just the overall uh, approach to creating scores. You would say, I want to say, um, what's most important to me? What do I want to give the most points for? And how long is my sales cycle? How long will I leave those scores up? So that's the, the quick and dirty of it. Um, scores in active campaign run once per contact once you make them, unless they match your rules, in which case you can create rules in an automation where people are able to have that score run multiple times. So what do I mean by that? Um, there's static scoring where it's going to only run the one time and there's dynamic scoring where it's going to run multiple times every time a contact matches that condition. So why would you want to do all of this? This seems pretty nutty. There's a lot going on here, right? Well, oh, sorry, my little screen went away. Okay, so uses for lead scoring. We have many things that you can use lead scoring for. Essentially, you can identify contacts who are a good match for your product or your service, but maybe they're not as engaged as you'd like. So you want to move them into a nurturing automation. Um, you'd say this person isn't really, or. Uh, engaging with me enough, I'm gonna move them into this nurturing automation, uh, increasing their interest, and then you'll strengthen that relationship. Scoring is able to be a useful benchmark in this case to show you how a particular contact is doing so you can change accordingly. Um, you can also use lead scoring to identify the different interests of your contacts. So uh, you can create rules and automations that give points based on the specific product pages of your website or specific product links and emails. So when they reach a particular score, then you're able to act on it. Um, so for example, we have a fake business that we talk about in Active Campaign all the time called Boone's Bandanas. It's our little store where we sell dog harnesses and collars and leashes. And so when we're talking about Boone's and we're talking about lead scoring, we think about what types of products people are the most interested in and which pages on my website are they visiting? Have they replied to an email, et cetera? So these are the kinds of things that you want to lead score is their interests. Um, next up, you can measure engagement of all of your new customers. For example, if you are like us, Active Campaign, if you're in the SaaS industry, uh, the software as a service industry, if new customers aren't really interacting with your emails or your website, you might need to do something where you reach out additionally so that they don't cancel. So you want to make sure that if a new customer has a low engagement score, that you're moving them into the kinds of automations that are going to um, really drive 
uh, drive engagement a bit more. Um, then after uh, after you got all that up and running, you can also use lead scoring to create a predictive model. So if your scoring system is accurate, you'll be able to use those leads in your funnel to forecast revenue. And so that's uh, that's something that I would consider a longer term goal for lead scoring. No one starts lead scoring and is already able to create a predictive model up and running. You need to get some time uh, under your belt to kind of learn what your contacts do, what they engage with, so that you understand a little bit better how you're scoring. Um, and then the last bit, you can also alter your marketing based on the contact score. So if someone is more engaged, you can be a little bit more aggressive, perhaps. You can reach out a few more times. If they're opening all your emails, then maybe they're just a really great fit and they're really excited to hear from you. Um, maybe someone who is really falling back, you might want to push them into a, a slower nurture. If they're not opening your emails or you, you don't want to send them so many that they get irritated, et cetera. So you can adapt your marketing based on the leads behavior if you're using lead scoring. And that's what's really cool about that. So how do we do lead scoring? Well, there's a lot of answers to that question and that's where we'll be for the pretty much the rest of the uh, this talk. But uh, before you start um, just simply giving points all willy nilly to things, um, you need to start planning out what your lead scoring will look like. So here are the quick seven steps that you can do to get you started with lead scoring. So I'll talk through them with us all. So first up, you want to think about, do I have any criteria that are required for my product? Uh, for example, say you need someone to be in the same city as your service area or let's say you're selling um, uh, beer and they have to be 21. Uh, there are sometimes minimum criteria that people need to meet. So if there's anything like that in your business, you need to ma match that threshold first. Then next up, you need to start thinking about your target market. So identifying the qualities that those market that target market usually possesses. Uh, you can work closely with your marketing or sales team to figure these kinds of things out. Generally, your marketing or your salespeople really have a great handle on who they're talking to, the kinds of things they respond to and why. So thinking about who your target market is and kind of drawing that vision in your, in your business, in your mind. Um, next up, we want you to think about who is your ideal lead. So you identify the characteristics of who would be a perfect customer for me? What, what do I wish I could, if I could model a customer and they would always come to me like this, what would my customer be? Um, so then you can say, well, if someone is taking these actions that this perfect customer would take, I'm going to give them more points. I will increase their score. So then you're able to say, I'm looking for people who their business has a certain size budget. So maybe the people with a certain size budget is my perfect customer. So I'm looking for that. Or maybe someone who is the decision maker in their business. That's who you're looking to talk to. So if someone is the decision maker, maybe they get a few more points just based on their role alone. So thinking about the different ways that people can fit into the criteria of your perfect customer. Um, next up, thinking about how do customers behave? And this is where we think about all of the different actions that our customers can take. So we're thinking about all of those different conversion behaviors. There's email opens, email clicks, email replies, email forwards, social media shares, web page visits. Uh, they can do requests to contact. They can download form submissions, all those kinds of things. Think about all of the different ways that you create um, opportunities for people to interact with you and how much that means to you. Um, you need to think about what are those critical conversion behaviors. Critical conversion behaviors are the, the things that most of your leads go through prior to becoming a customer. So if there's something that always happens, um, for example, if they love your emails and they're opening your emails, but you know once they sign up for that free trial, that's where they're most likely to become your customer, then what you're going to want to do is plan your marketing so it pushes to that free trial, and then also uh, add a bunch of points when they get to that free trial to alert you that they're maybe close to buying. Um, after you've mapped out all of the different ways your customers can behave, and believe me, that will take a while, uh, you want to think about your system. You have to decide on a system that you're basing this on, because lead scoring uh, is very customizable. 
we don't have any sort of baseline score that we're suggesting you have people meet. You just need to think about what works in your business. So what I generally like to teach is if you're not sure, creating just a simple, straightforward 100 point system is usually the easiest way to start. That's the place to begin. And then you can look at all of those different conversion behaviors we were talking about, those email opens, clicks, et cetera, and thinking about um, how much of the 100 points would this be worth to me? Is there a lot going on uh, there? So, for example, an email open is not maybe as big of an indication that someone's interested as someone clicking on the link. So you would pick those points appropriately. Um, after you decide on your system, you need to distribute those points. So you start uh, assigning those ideal behaviors. You start building your automations, distributing those points. And I'll show you that when we get into the demo. And then after you're done with that, you're never done. <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, with Active Campaign, generally, there's always iteration to be had. So you'll refine those scores over time. You'll think more about uh, what's important to you and all of that. So it will take you some time to get used to it. Uh, you might decide opening an email is worth X amount of points and opening uh, or clicking a link is worth Y. And then later you realize, oops, I haven't been putting any links for people to click in my emails. So now I'm not even getting my points right. So really making sure that you've caught all of those things that you want to score is also pretty important. And then I see I have a question that is a great question. So I'll answer that live. Um, Richard asks if you can score people beyond with just email opens. And if they download a lead magnet, can they score all of that? Uh, so yes, Richard, you can. Um, and this I will be showing shortly, but you can score email opens, clicks, links, replies. Uh, you can score when people visit certain pages on your website. If you have active campaign tra site tracking on your website, you can do all those great things right there. So. Um, Let's get back to the presentation. So again, here are some of these actions that I'm talking about. And there's like kind of cool actions, and then there's warm, and then there's hot. And if you think of it that way, uh, it, it gets a little bit easier to start awarding points. So you would say opens an email, that's a pretty low level of engagement. Um, it's, it's the level that I definitely want. I definitely want people opening my emails, but it's not a huge indication that someone is super hot and ready to buy. However, if someone clicks a link within that email, then you know that they read the email, which is honestly a lot more than you can usually say about an email, and that they were compelled to follow through on that call to action. So that clicking a link is going to be a higher indication of interest. Um, next up, if they can reply to an email, that is going to be worth a lot more points. They're actually asking you a question or they have something to say. Replying should be worth more points than that. Visiting a sales page, that's one of those that people like to give a, a good number of points because if you're looking at the pricing, if you're looking at that final page, you should be giving them a lot of points. Visiting a checkout page, you might be asking, why do I get points for visiting a checkout page? Uh, that is because sometimes people reach your checkout page, but then they leave. Um, and that might be a moment where you have an abandoned cart sequence, and then you also add some lead score points to really alert you, this person abandoned the cart and they were this close to buying. Let's add some lead points to them and kick up their uh, engagement so we can try and convert that over. And also, you definitely want to give people points just if they become a customer. It is sometimes possible that people come in hot and they just go from zero to customer right away, which, you know, that happens at Active Campaign too. Some people buy Active Campaign without talking to any of us. And, and we love that. And we're glad that they're here and we'll talk to them once they get here. Um, but when I'm thinking about how I want to score these, uh, here's just some quick parameters that you can give yourself. Just in general, I'm thinking that email click is about a point or the email opens about one point and the click is five. Replying to an email, that's 10 points. Uh, coming to my sales page, that's 20. Visiting my checkout page, you're this close, that's 50 points. And then becoming a customer, I'm going to just go ahead and give you the full 100 points. I already know that you're a customer, you've already converted. So as we're talking about lead scores in active campaign, as I mentioned earlier, you build lead scores in the manage scoring portal and you are going to create rules 
using the segment builder. And if you're new to Active Campaign, I'll show you what the segment builder does, but essentially it's our way where you can create that like perfect Venn diagram of the different kinds of people you want to reach out to, which you, who you want to target for what marketing activity. Um, and then lead score rules will help you plan how many points you can award for each action. So as I mentioned earlier, there's static lead scoring and then there's also dynamic lead scoring. So that static lead scoring, you're saying, I'm gonna set up my rules and my rules may be these 1.5 point, 10 points. This is my, my rules that I've created for myself, for my static scoring. But then when I go to my dynamic scoring, you're going to base your points on those rules you made before and say, okay, I'm sending another email in the future. I'm going to add a point into my automation where that email is being sent so that when someone opens that email, they'll get a point for opening the email. And that is how you're able to make points run repeatedly for people. So you set the lead score rules in um, the managed scoring section and those only run one time. And then the dynamic scores within automations run multiple times. So you sort your points into the appropriate set of rules, essentially thinking of rules like a, like a folder where all of your information lives. Um, then in addition, you can set that automation to run multiple times. So say you're sending emails and you are trying to give them points every time they open an email, you can have an automation that runs every time someone opens an email, give them the X number of points. Anytime someone open, clicks a certain link, give them number of points. You can have those automations running so that they'll go in them every single time they do it. So that's how you get that aggregate point count. You can also trigger automations based on lead score changes. So say someone visits that pricing page and gets 20 points and then they visit my checkout page, all of a sudden they have 70 points and I'm like, whoa, what happened here? I can trigger an automation if someone hits a high enough point threshold that I want to let someone know. And then the last cool thing about dynamic uh, lead scoring is that those updated scores for each person show up on their contact profile. So you're always able to see what anyone's lead score is at any given time. So now let's get into the platform. Um, let me check really quick. Is there anything? Okay. So I'm going to go to contacts first. Oops. And I'm on my home internet, so I apologize for any little blips. Uh, I also apologize if my cat comes over and starts yelling, but who knows? Anyway, um, so we're here in contacts, which is where scoring is managed. And I'm going to go right here to manage scoring, which is the third link down. And for this course today, I actually already created an example score so I can show you and walk through it before I actually build some. So let's take a look at my education live example score. So if we'll remember, actually, let's go to my uh, section of lead scoring. If we remember these points here, I've actually gone ahead and built that into the active campaign system. So you'll see if this contact matches has opened any campaign or email, that's what I'm saying. If they've opened any email at all, that is what that is. I'm adding one point. If anyone has clicked on any link on in any campaign, I'm adding five points. So as you can see, I've taken these actions that I determined outside of active campaign, and I built these rules so that they will remind me in the future how many points people get for what thing, so that when I build automations, I can keep in my mind what points go to what action. So, uh, let me actually pull up this guy right here. So if a contact matches this section here, if anyone has not been with active campaign for very long, these are all bits of the segment builder. Anytime you see me making these logic choices, um, has visited a specific URL has clicked on a certain link. All of this is the segment builder and it's allowing me to act on the actions of my contacts. So I'm going to hit save on that. Um, you can also have points expire. And I haven't talked much about expiration, but why would you want points to expire? Uh, you might have people getting points on email opens, but you probably don't want to count their email open from 
six months ago, two years ago, et cetera. So generally speaking, if you're not sure how many months to expire your points after, I would say six months or a year is always a nice place to start if you're just learning and, and seeing how, how the points go for you. Um, but you can also decide to base your point expiration on your sales cycle. So for example, one time when I was teaching um, scoring at a study hall long ago, uh, someone told me that they were a government contractor and that their uh, lead scores didn't expire for about a year and a half because that's about how long their sales cycle was, to which I said, then I guess that's fine. That's good. That's enough time. Uh, that's what you needed to do there. So let me go ahead and actually add another rule so you can see me do that from the beginning. Um, this is my total score. And anytime someone does one of these things, this the rule for that will run one time. So one time they open an email, they will get one point. And one time they click a link, they will get five points. And now if I want that to happen again, I will build it in my future automations. So let me go back to manage scoring. I'm going to add a score. And as you add a score, it will first ask you if it is a contact score or a deal score. And deal scores are related to our um, CRM, our customer relationship manager tool. So we're only talking about contact scores today. So I'm going to say contact score. So as you see here, it says score seven. That name of the score is going to show up in the contact profile. So you want to name this something that's going to be helpful for you. So you'd say um, engagement scoring. I think that I, I have a few of these in here. So I'm going to call this engagement scoring too. And then you could have a quick description of what that is. And then it says there are no rules set up at a rule. So I'm going to click here. And it again brings me to the segment builder. So this is where I was selecting uh, all of these options. We'll say has opened, has opened any email, then you hit save, and then you can change these points. So we said that an email is worth one point. I would change that to one. And then the points automatically are set to not expire, but I'm going to go ahead and select six months again. And after I had all my rules set up here, I would turn that to active. So this was just to show you how it looks before you get started uh, versus my example that I've already built out. Um, now let's jump into automations really quick so I can show you how that works in an automation. So say we're creating an automation and we're going to start from scratch and we're going to say that we want to set up our automation that gives someone five points every time they click on any link, any link at all. So I'm going to say clicks on a link in an email is my start trigger. This is what I want to score. So that's my start trigger. And I'll hit continue. And it's asking me, do I want a specific email in a specific email list? No, I want all of my emails. Do I want a specific link? No, I want all of my links. Then you'll see here, it says runs once. Normally speaking, automations run one time because you wouldn't want someone to go through the same option multiple times. But with lead scoring, that's a completely behind the scenes thing. You do want this to run more than one time. So I'm actually going to hit this and hit multiple times. And then I'm going to click add start. So after someone clicks on a link in an email, I'm going to hit plus to add my action here. And I'm going to go to contacts and click adjust a contact score. So now you'll see score and it will give you these different options. And it will give you the options of all of the scores that you've made live. So I just realized I actually didn't make my score live. So I'm going to cancel that and go back and turn my score on. And manage scoring. Live webinars, it's exciting. Oh, I'm just stuck for a moment now. Well, uh, I will let this think for a moment. Oh, exit. There we go, manage scoring, we're back now. 
So my education live example score, you can see I left it as inactive and I meant to turn that active. So I'm going to turn that on and hit save. And go back to my automation. And here's the automation I was building. I know that because all of our other automations are named, which is an important thing to do. Um, so let's go back to contacts and adjust our contact score. And now you'll see my Education Live example score is here. So I turned my scoring criteria on. Now I have this folder to, to put my scoring criteria into. So I'm going to say add because we said we're adding points every time and we're adding five points every time they click a link. And here we also set the expiration again. So I'm going to have this again expire after six months. And I know I'm putting in the same information again, but that is because I want the same thing to keep rep repetitiously happening. So then I'll hit save. And that's literally it. You can create a bunch of automations that say, uh, anytime someone does this start trigger, give them this amount of points and have it expire after X amount of time. And uh, I'll show you quickly on a contact profile where that is. I'm going to pull up one of our friends here on the education team, Tabitha, my work wife, as we call it each other. I'll click right here. And you can see right here we have different engagement scores that we've created. So we have this education live example score and she doesn't have any points for that yet because that is a brand new score that I've just created. But she has done some things in some of my other score categories. So all of the scores that you create will show up here on your, um, on your contact profile. And you can additionally use automations to trigger something once someone hits a particular um, contact score. So, uh, that was a lot for a quick time, and I do see that I have a few questions, so I will jump over into the questions now. Um, let me see. Um, for this question, if, you, if you're using forms that are not active campaign forms, uh, that will not track their clicks. You need to have an active campaign form to do that kind of tracking or it needs to be on a page where active campaign site tracking exists. So you need to use our forms for that level of tracking. But if you have um, an integration via Zapier or something with your other forms, you can still le use lead scoring if you'd like to say anytime someone um, completes this, op this action that you have being imported into active campaign, you can still use lead scoring there. And then is there a way to track prospects and segment them directly into your funnel? Um, there, there's plenty of there are plenty of ways to track prospects and segment them into a funnel. Uh, but I, I think I would need to know a little bit more about what kind of thing you're looking to build. That's why um, earlier I was mentioning a, a lot of people just start with about a 100 point. Uh, format so that they can just say, I'm just basing this on 100 points and I'll kind of figure it out after that. So um, there we go there. And then we have another question about if we can put a contact inactive if the score is, I, I'd assume if you have a low score. And yes, yes, you can make an inactive score uh, or you can make someone inactive if they have a low score. You would actually just um, have a trigger B right here. Where's the score? Here we go. Score changes. So you can have a trigger that is their score changes. And you're saying if my education live example score is below 10, let's say, then I can have that say, we'll run that score. And actually, let's do if a contact score changes below 10, then I'm going to, instead of adding points, I'm going to make them inactive. So you can use lead scoring in both of those types of directions. And just to finish up before the end of the, of the time, we do have a few cool next steps for you. So uh, if 
Uh, just so you know, also, oh, Richard, thank you for asking. The recording will automatically be sent out to everyone who registered at the email that you registered with. Um, and I will uh, get these links in the chat for all of these resources. So first up, we have this great uh, blog where I took these seven rules from, uh, all about lead scoring rules. Uh, we also have another great piece of content, this Let's Learn Lead Scoring video. That is from my colleague Tabitha, also all about lead scoring, if you'd like to learn some more. Um, also, if you go to activecampaign.com slash education, you'll find our courses and our education center there. Uh, and then lastly, if you have any other burning questions, we also have uh, a great program called Office Hours. And my other co-presenter for Education Live, Shiv, is our presenter for Office Hours. So if you go to that Demio link that I just put in the chat, um, that will be Office Hours for y'all. And the material, the presentation doesn't get sent out with the video, just the video does, but hopefully that's helpful for today. And keep an eye out. I'm sure I'll be doing another version of this soon. But I believe I got everyone's questions. Uh, let me see if I have some more. Oh, two more links here. If you are looking for accelerated onboarding, if you're still new to Active Campaign and you want to learn more about the whole system, accelerated onboarding is our webinar that is 90 minutes uh, all about the platform. And then the last bit is if you would like to join our community. So that's everything for today. Um, I really appreciate your, your all's questions and your attention, and I really hope that you find it a cool way to bring lead scoring into your everyday at Active Campaign. And I hope to see you soon on one of our next presentations.